Let's start our session. Uh, I am Leonid Korolstein, uh, PASS, VP on Research and uh, Development. Uh, please welcome to PASS session on CAI Conference uh, 2022. We're happy that you visit us uh, and uh, our plan for today is the following. Uh, first, I will do uh, some short introduction and then uh, we will show you some lead demonstration of a workflow. First, uh, let me remind you uh, about uh, what is a PASS software suite. PASS software suite is a uh, very, uh, very powerful and uh, complex suite that allows uh, to analyze the all main aspects of piping and equipment uh, of uh, plants and uh, all other different types of piping. And it consists of uh, four main programs. Pass hydro system for piping uh, fluid flow and heat exchange analysis. Pipe stress for piping stress analysis. Pipe equipment for stress analysis of pressure vessels, column tanks, and heat exchangers. And pass nozzle FEM for nozzle shear junction stress and flexibility analysis. And also, of course, we have all kinds of integration utilities uh, and other features. Uh, and some of them we are going to show you. So we have behind us uh, more than 50 years of non-stop development. And in the last years, uh, we very intensively expand on the world market. So what are the regions of application? So first and most uh, is the process plant and piping utilities and the distant heating transfer piping and equipment. But also our software is widely applied to all and guys gathering uh, piping networks, storage piping networks, uh, and of course, uh, different kinds of pressure vessels. So what are the unique features uh, of our software? It's the first uh, the combination of intelligent user interface and sophisticated calculation capabilities, which provide uh, powerful and, with, uh, and uh, in the same time is of use. And of course, it's integration with popular uh, CAD tools and different kinds of CAD systems and software. Uh, and some of this integration we will demonstrate to you today. So it is uh, the package which is very easy to learn. So new users uh, can start performing piping and equipment analysis just in days, and sometimes even in hours, uh, rather than months. So this is an uh, excellent tool both for beginners and for very experienced uh, engineers to do their work effectively. Uh, this is just uh, to show you our world, right, where we are. We are our users. So we have uh, several thousand users. And this is uh, some integration capabilities uh, on the example of uh, PASS Start Prop, our uh, piping stress analysis. Uh, it is integrated uh, with different other parts, uh, like PASS Hydro System with uh, two way integration, PASS Nozzle FAM two way integration. We can import. Uh, and uh, sometimes export data from different 3D design, plant design systems, uh, as well as with such uh, CAD platforms after Autodesk AutoCAD. We have two-way integration with Aveva uh, plant design systems like PDMS, E3D, Marine. And we also have uh, uh, import and sometimes export with some of our uh, competitive software. And uh, of course, we have uh, some special API uh, which allow you to make your own add-on features. And uh, one of the recent uh, development uh, was uh, import from Autodesk Revit, uh, which now used more and more widely for process plant design, process piping design. And uh, the similar diagram uh, can be drawn for some other uh, parts of our suite, for example, for parts hydro system. So what we are going to show you today uh, in the leaf demonstration. First, we will show you how to import uh, the model with uh, all geometry and data from after this credit uh, into past that prof. 
uh, to make uh, basic uh, analysis and pass the proof, then uh, forward this model to pass hydro system for <coughs> uh, water hammer and steady state and water hammer analysis and uh, uh, forward this back this model with solar results and calculated time balance forces to pass star proof and make a stress analysis uh, especially for load cases, uh, which include uh, unbalanced forces uh, due to uh, water hammer. And in the same time, uh, during this analysis, we can take into account uh, uh, frame analysis uh, using pass nozzle frame with connection to equipment and some non-standard elements or some standard elements like elbows. And if time uh, allows, we also show you slug flow, how to analyze this uh, in hydro system and uh, uh, use these results in start pro. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, I invite you to come to our pass uh, uh, And now I will forward uh, the screen to our first demonstrator, our VP on CND, Nick Maximenko. Yes, hello. Can you see my screen? Yes. Good. So thank you, Leonid. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Nick Maximenko. In uh, past team, I am responsible for all integration activities uh, between uh, our past solutions and uh, third party computer aided design tools. Today, I want uh, to show you how it works on an example Revit model. So I have prepared Revit model with a simple pipe. So you see it consists of some uh, supports, the valve, some elbows. You can see the, uh, the material. A106B, you can see the temperature, 150, you can see pressure, 1.6 MPA. Now we need to export it into PassStartProf. It's very easy. We just need to open uh, the system browser, select our pipe and add it here. Then we need to just press start, specify the file name and press enter. So that's it. Um, export completed. It's important to say uh, that um, the export procedure is highly configurable and uh, it has no restrictions on the um, data format in Autodesk Revit. So this is our file. I can show you how it looks like. So it's a text file with all data exported from Autodesk Revit to import it into past start prof. Now we can open start prof and just load our T1 here. Okay, so as you see, the model is exactly the same as in Revit. So this is model in Revit, this is model in Start Prof. So we can check that material is exactly the same. A 106B, the pressure is 1.6 MPA, temperature, so it is. Now we can uh, perform stress analysis. We need to save our file T1 and press OK. As you see, without manual input of any data. So the analysis is completed. Here you can see output table with analysis results. Uh, my colleagues will uh, describe it in details a little bit later. At the moment I can show you the deformed shape of this pipe. Uh, let's tune the scale a little bit. So you see the displacement. 
OK. Now I will save this file and send it to my colleague to perform fluid flow analysis. Search Lysin, please go on. Thank you, Nick. Hello, everyone. My name is Sergey Lysin, and I'm past support and quality assurance engineer. And let me tell you a few words about our another software called Pass Hydro System. Pass Hydro System is a fluid flow analysis software. So this is where you calculate your fluid flow velocities, pressure drops, temperature drops, etc., etc., etc. It's a very powerful, very useful tool, and First of all, Hydro System has interface, direct interface with Bastar Prof. So if you already have your piping model modeled or imported into Start Prof, you can simply press File, Import, and simply load this model. So I'll take the file from Nick that Nick just exported from Revit. OK, it goes like this. Great. And to perform, first of all, let's talk about a steady state flow and fluid flow analysis. Let's look at how, how to perform this analysis. To perform fluid flow analysis in a hydro system, after you've modeled or imported your piping model, you simply need to specify what type of fluid you have in this piping system. For example, there I will have a water, simple water. And for instance, let's say that our fluid will go from here to here, from node 10 to node 1. And let's see that our boundary conditions for calculation will be a fluid flow rate about 40,000 kilograms per hour and inlet pressure about 1 megapascal, for example. And so that's it. We're ready to go. We're ready to perform. First of all, let's perform isothermal flows, steady state flow analysis, where you can see how your fluid is moving, at which velocity, what density, viscosity, etc. it has, what friction losses, local losses, and what pressure in each point of this pipe. Or you can perform thermal analysis, heat and hydraulic analysis, as we call it here, and calculate not only the hydraulic parameters, but also the temperature change and heat losses. And also in hydro system, you can calculate a transient flow or search analysis, or our, as we call it, a water hammer analysis. So for example, let's calculate what will happen if we will close this valve. Let me close it right here. So I simply select it. And let's say that our valve is closing within one sec. Quite fast change. And to do this, I need to specify, for example, I would like to know what happened before this valve over here. OK. And after this valve over here. And let's say that we want to find out what will happen within five seconds since the moment we start to close this valve. That's it. I perform the isothermal steady state flow analysis calculation one more time and I run the water hammer analysis. Usually water hammer analysis takes a little bit more time than steady state flow, but I don't think it will take a, a long, just a few seconds. Bang, and it's done. So first of all, let's look at what, what happened before and after this valve. Let's look at the pressure at this point. And as you can see at this particular example, we don't have a very strong, very strong water hammer. The pressure rise before the valve is about 0.3 megapascal. So there's nothing crucial for this piping system. And you know, if you're not very experienced engineer, you may assume that there is no, um, there is no damage, there is no harm, for the, the, the water hammer will cause no harm, will be no harmful for this piping system. But unfortunately, that's not always the case because at Water Hammer, we usually have two types of problems. The first problem is the pressure rise. And the second problem is that you may have an additional unbalanced forces that occur during shock wave traveling through the piping systems at different nodes inside this piping. 
So you should consider both of these factors if you want to find out whether the water hammer is harmful or not for your piping system. And in hydro system, we not only can calculate all these factors, we not only can calculate the pressure rise, we not only can calculate this and balanced forces value, we also can export them into our StartProf software. Actually, we want we can export this forces to Caesar too, also, but Caesar, you know, they died. 2000 years ago. Haha. <laughs> so I will export these forces to start prof. For example, T11. Okay. And all the design, all the un unbalanced forces are exported into this file. And now I would like to give a floor to my colleague, uh, our past stress analysis specialist, Mr. Alex Matwave, who will show you how you then can use this forces file, how to apply them to this piping, piping system and perform stress analysis for this pipeline in Start Pro software. Alex? Okay, uh, hi everybody. So I am Alex Matveev. I am the head of uh, development team of the pipe stress analysis software by Start Pro. And now uh, I will show you how to work with this file and how to take into account the unbalanced forces that we receive from search leasing uh, from pass hydro system software so i'm opening this file that we just uh, imported from revit this is the file so please let me check one moment please uh, and now uh, let me show you how to uh, work with this uh, file. So I open the properties here. You can see the pipe properties, the pressure, temperature, diameter, uh, wall thickness, uh, length, and so on. We have the uh, anchors. We have some supports. Okay, so uh, here we have the anchor. Uh, we have the uh, rest and supports and so on. So how to import the unbalanced uh, pressure forces. I open the operational mode editor, uh, click add, uh, lo uh, load forces from the file and specify the file generated by the pass hydro system software. Click open and we receive uh, 13 uh, operational modes with different times. This is uh, 0.03 seconds, 0.06 seconds and so on. Uh, and let's check the values of the forces. For example, I will open this, uh, this band and check the main properties of the band. Here we can see the uh, load cases, different load cases. And uh, I can see that the greatest forces are in the 13 load case with the time uh, 0.97 seconds. So let's check another point, for example, this one. Here we can see uh, also the greatest force is in the last load case. And let's check the valve. Here also we have the greatest force in the last load case. Uh, this is just only in this example and some other uh, other piping models. Uh, we can have different values of the forces in different directions at different time. So uh, in this model we have the greatest values at the, uh, this operational mode. So now let's run analysis. I run analysis and now let's see the deformed shape of this piping system. This is the main mode. Let me run animation. We see the thermal expansions of this piping system and also the weight loads. As you can see, it is moving down. It is caused by the weight. 
and also it expands due to thermal expansions. And now I will switch to the first uh, unbalanced forces load case. Uh, we will not see any great displacement because, uh, because the forces are very small. So I will uh, switch to the last load case and we can see that uh, the pipe is moving in that direction. We can ch check the displacement value. Let me just uh, select, for example, this node 4 and check the value of the displacement in y direction. It is uh, about 90 millimeters. The pipe diameter about 100 millimeters, so this displacement is quite big and in some cases the pipe may fall down from the supports. And also let's check the stresses. So the stresses looks okay. Let's check the output, pipe and stress. Yes, here we have uh, everything is okay. And where is the greatest stresses? So let's check. For example, in this operational mode, the greatest stress is uh, in uh, the node 1. It's 182 uh, uh, megapascals in this node 1. So now, how to reduce the stresses? For example, if we exceed the allowable value. How to reduce it? For example, we can add some kind of restraint. Uh, in this case, as the movement is in y direction, so I think the best solution will be adding the node and adding the limit stop. Let me add the limit stop along the y axis. Uh, I will not specify any friction, but of course you can specify the friction. Here is the limit stop. And now I run analysis again. Okay, so now we can check stresses. In the load case the time 0 0.97. It was uh, 182 megapascals uh, stress in the node 1, but now we have just 13 megapascals, so the stress uh, is uh, much lower. And let's check the deformed shape. The deformed shape and the load case time 0 0.97. I run the an animation and we don't see any displacements because this limit stop hold the pipe and don't let it move uh, during the water hammer. So we solve the problem. Uh, this uh, was the demonstration of the integration between uh, PASS Hydro System software for uh, fluid flow analysis and the PASS Star Prof software for uh, pipe stress analysis and the, uh, and the PASS the loads from the water hammer uh, from Hydro System to PASS Star Prof. And also I will show you quickly the integration between uh, pipe stress analysis software and software, uh, the finite element analysis software for uh, nozzle uh, analysis, for nozzle and non standard element analysis. Uh, this is the nozzle FAM software that allows you to calculate the stress intensification factors for the bands, uh, T's and some other elements and also flexibility factors for trunions. For example, we have here the trunion element uh, and also it can calculate the nozzle elements. Uh, it can calculate the, uh, the flexibilities of the equipment nozzles. It can calculate the stresses in the equipment nozzles and also it can calculate the allowable loads for the nozzles using the finite element method, not uh, uh, WRC code, not uh, ASME B31J, just using the finite element uh, calculation. So here I will open the project settings and here you see two options. 
there are two options. The first one is use uh, ASME B31J because uh, the latest ASME B31 Free 2020 uh, code is implemented in Starprof software. And uh, the, all the stress intensification and flexibility factors are calculated according to the ASME B31J code. Uh, but also, uh, you may select the finite element calculation of the stress intensification and K factors. Uh, the ASME B31J code has some limitation. For example, the diameter uh, ratio to the wall thickness is limited to 100. It should not exceed 100. It is limitation of the ASME B31J and also it can't it can't calculate the stress intensification factors for lateral T's uh, when the angle between the branch and run of the T is uh, uh, less than 90 degrees. So it is only for straight T's but not for laterals. But using the finite element method, we can calculate the stresses in lateral T's as easy as using ASME B31J code. And also we can analyze all elements, bands, trunions, the uh, lateral T's uh, with uh, ratio DT greater than 100 without any problem. So how to do this? I just select the use finite element method analysis and then let me create the nozzle element. Here we have some equipment, pumps, uh, air coolers, fire heaters, turbines, uh, and also we have tank nozzle. It also can be analyzed using finite element method. And I will select the vessel nozzle. This is just a uh, pressure vessel. I select the material. It will be used uh, during the analysis. The temperature, the height of, uh, for example, it will be vertical vessel. So I enter the height of this vessel to, um, uh, to calculate automatically the thermal expansions of the vessel. And here we have several options. We can not consider the flexibilities, but we also can consider flexibilities using the WRC297 code or uh, BSPD code. The axis is vertical. Okay. And also we can calculate stresses using WRC code, but uh, this, is, this uh, document, WRC, uh, has also a lot of restrictions uh, the ratios between wall thicknesses, diameters, and so on, that um, don't allow us to use it in all, all possible cases. And also it can't calculate, for example, lateral nozzle uh, that is not radial. Uh, it can calculate only radial nozzles to the vessels. So it has a lot of restrictions, the details you can check in our uh, online help system and on my pipe stress analysis training course on Udemy. Uh, and uh, right now uh, I will show you how to calculate the flexibilities using WRC. I will just click here, select the cylindrical shell. For example, diameter will be 100 millimeters, wall thickness 20 millimeters, nozzle nozzle diameter is uh, 100, uh, wall thickness is 4 millimeters, the length will be 4 meters for example, and offset will be 0. Click OK and we have several flexibilities but WRC code give us only three flexibilities. It is uh, one axle flexibility in axle direction, here this is the axle direction and free bending flexibilities uh, in this and this direction. Okay, uh, other flexibilities assumed as zero. And also st uh, Prof will calculate the stresses after analysis using the WRC code. Let me demonstrate this. I'll just run analysis. 
and open the nozzle and equipment loads and here you see <coughs> that the ratio of uh, calculated stresses to allowable stresses is less than 100 so it's okay our nozzle passed the requirements but I will show you the report like this I will move my mouse over this cell and you see detailed stress report according to WRC 537 and 5 uh, and 297 uh, uh, documents and stop off check the stresses uh, in the shell <coughs> and in the nozzle the details uh, how does it work you can check in my uh, training course uh, uh, on Udemy uh, the, the complete pipe stress analysis course and also now let me demonstrate how to analyze the same but using the finite element method I will just switch to finite element method and here I will select the allowable loads using finite element method and now I should specify the properties of this nozzle I click here the nozzle FEM software opens in the nozzle FEM you can select the base element and nozzle <coughs> the base element uh, can be a horizontal vessel, vertical storage tank, T, a different type of conical shells, different type of the heads, elliptical including the flat head, uh, the band and also rectangular plate. So almost uh, all types uh, of elements are, uh, are here and now the nozzle nozzle element we also can select different type of nozzles it's set in set on with reinforcing pad uh, and with different type of reinforcing like this okay and also we can select different uh, geometry of this nozzle like this 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 so we have different different geometries i will just select the simple one radial uh, radial uh, nozzle uh, set on for example the diameter will be uh, 100 millimeters or well, wall thickness 4 millimeters let me check I will click return to star prof the finite element this is the matrix uh, finite element analysis of this nozzle is done and now you see here the flexibilities of this nozzle calculated using finite element method not WR, uh, WRC uh, document and also here you see the allowable, allowable loads calculated for this nozzle so now I just click OK and run analysis Star Prof will take into account the flexibilities and compare the loads with allowable loads also we have another option you can select calculate the stresses in this nozzle after analysis in this case star prof will run nozzle fem two times first time to calculate the flexibilities before analysis and the second time after star prof analysis it will check the stresses in each nozzle for example if you have 100 nozzles in your piping system star prof will automatically uh, calculate all 100 nozzles using finite element method and also if I'll open the band properties you can uh, switch on this option click here you, you can see the, uh, the stress intensification factors and flexibility factors and it can be calculated using the finite element method I just click here and the model of this band is is calculated using the finite element method and here we see the values of flexibilities and stress intensification factors and also here also here we, we will see the values for this uh, for this band uh, for example for demonstration I will show you the true neon element let me delete this band and let me add here I will just delete all 
additional load cases and I will just add here the trunion element it will be dummy leg the radius will be for example 150 okay and let me add the pipe element for example 57 in y direction for example on 300 oh sorry 0 0.4 meters let me check this is the for, for example this is the dummy leg and we will analyze it we have several options we can analyze it using the Kellogg method and, and also we can analyze it uh, using the stress intensification factors that can be calculated using the finite element method let me run analysis the model the finite element model of this uh, dummy leg of this trunion is automatically calculated uh, using nozzle FEM software this is the matrix and after analysis we will see the stress intensification factors for this dummy leg the flexibility factors and for the trunion uh, stress intensification factors and flexibility factors okay and also we can calculate the lateral T's for example let me add some node here I will add the pipe element I will just add I will just add the cap here and I will insert the T element also we have the trunion uh, is it is the T without opening but I will just use the ordinary T element like this and I will also calculate this T uh, uh, using the finite element method instead of uh, ask me before one J I'll just click here calculate some some properties uh, uh, I need to specify for example I will enter the the length of the header the crotch height like this let me check okay now the finite element model of this T is calculated and you see the values of uh, stress intensification factors for branch for header and the flexibility factors all this is done automatically and now let me save my model I will give it additional name and run analysis Staprof asked me if I should recalculate the using finite element all the T's, uh, bands and all other elements I will select recalculate all objects so we just need to wait and it will recalculate okay it recalculate all the objects and now analysis is done we can check the for example nozzle and equipment loads here we see that the ratio for this nozzle is 49 percent uh, it is calculated uh, it calculates stresses using finite element method in the vessel nozzle in node one and also we can check the stresses uh, in all the all the bands T's and so on so for example if I will select this trunion uh, you will see the let me show you you will see the uh, stresses the stress values here are the stress intensification factors in the trunion element uh, and different values of the stresses and different cross sections of, of this trunion stop off check uh, one two three four five cross sections in in the trunion element 
automatically and of course the flexibility factor for the band that take into account the stiffening effect of the trunion. So all this done automatically. And also of course we will see the, uh, the stresses in this T and also I want to show you the lateral T for example I will add the projection in X direction. So now it is lateral T. I will just run uh, I will just run the calculation using finite element method for, for this T. So, so uh, it is uh, the geometry is not so good so uh, let me change for example maybe I, I should uh, reduce the diameter of the branch maybe because uh, this T can be produced let me check yes now it is working so stop off uh, automatically check the lateral T laterally reducing T using finite element method all the stress intensification factors are calculated so now if I will run analysis we will see the stresses in this model and also let me show you the nozzle FEM software. I will just run it, run pass nozzle FEM. Uh, and also I want to say that this is the free software. If you have the license of the Starprof software, you will receive uh, the uh, nozzle FEM for free. And it will work on the same dongle as Starprof. So let me show you, for example, uh, when Starprof, when we run analysis of the Starprof uh, model, it automatically generates the special folders with the models of the uh, T elements uh, and band and trunion elements. So let me show you that elements in Nuzzle FEM software. I will just open that model. The last one was the T lateral T. Let me run analysis to see the report okay so now oh sorry I, I will just add some some load to see the model like this okay to see the finite element model So here you see this is the lateral T model. Okay, and here, uh, here, here is our model. We can see the deformed shape. Uh, it is caused by the load that I just applied. We, we see the stresses in our T element, and this model was automatically generated from the star prof, and. The last one, I will show you the model of the trunion. I open the trunion. Let me also add some, some load here to see the finite element model. Okay. I run analysis. And the same way you can see the model of the band uh, of the vessel nozzle that we just applied. It is not a problem. You can check any model, uh, generate report and offer this report to the client. So here you see the finite element model and the stresses in this trunion element. And the same with the vessel nozzle like this. I will quickly show you. Okay, we also we already have some loads that automatically uh, pass from stop row, so I can run analysis, and we will see a stress report for this nozzle. We can offer it to the client. Here is our nozzle, and here is the deformed shape due to pressure and applied loads, and here is our nozzle. Okay. So uh, I finished, uh, I pass uh, to, 
to search listen. Okay. Okay, thank you, Alex. Another thing that we would like to show you is where we have, um, we already, I already mentioned that we have an integration between Hydro system and Start Prof regarding the forces loads caused by water hammer. But also in Hydro system, you can calculate forces caused by other undesirable, um, undesirable phenomena such as slack, gas liquid slack flow. Let's look at some example of gas liquid slack flow. Once again, I will import it from Start Prof. You know, I'm the laziest person in past team. I, I don't like to manually enter all the data, so I simply import it from Start Prof. And let's look at this type of piping system. Okay, it goes like this. So we have a two phase flow at this time, not only liquid, but liquid mixture with gas that goes from here to here. And let's calculate it here first in hydro system. So once again, first thing I need to do is I need to specify my fluids. Now, not the one fluids, but two separate fluids. The first will be, let's say, water, and the second fluid, let it be, let it be air, water plus air mixture. Okay. Okay. And let's our boundary conditions at this time will be the pressure at this initial node, for example, three megapascals, the fluid flow rate about two millions kilograms per hour. And for example, we have a 10% of gas and a 19 mass percent of liquid. And we're gonna close this guy over here. There will be no flow in here. So here I will add some cap, for example. Okay, closed valve, a cap. And of course, to perform this fluid flow analysis more correctly and to, to calculate not only um, hydraulic parameters, but also slack flow parameters, we need to specify the correct methods that allow us to do this. In Hydro System, we have a special TUFFP methods that designed to not only predict the two-phase flow itself, but more closely look at these parameters and um, parameters of slugs of gas liquid slugs so I select TUFFP methods and that's it I'm ready for calculation let's calculate this model now we're calculating two-phase flow there are some warnings about zero length pipes but that's okay okay the calculation is done and if you calculate two-phase flow in your calculation results you will see a column which says the flow pattern and it says what type of flow pattern you have on each and every piping components. And here, as you can see, we have intermittent flow. Intermittent flow is the more general name for slug flow. For those who don't know, slug flow is when you have a severance of liquids and gas phases inside a piping system. So when this liquid slug move through another elbows or another piping components, they will hit this elbow, this element, and of course, Sometimes it may, co may cause a high unbalanced forces that may lead to displacement of this pipeline. Pipeline may fall from supports or something like this. So in Hydro system, you can predict this phenomena. You can view the flow pattern diagram to see how deep you are in slack flow. Yeah, right now we're very deep. We can avoid it. <laughs> if we don't change, uh, not plan to change this pipe, piping system at all. And we can see the parameters of this slack flow. We have a special slack flow results tab where you can see the size of these slacks, uh, the amount of liquid inside the slacks, their velocities and their frequencies. That's very, very interesting, very important parameters. So you can, for example, calculate the natural frequencies of your piping and compare them to the frequencies of slack flow to make sure that you don't have any resonance or resonate effects or something like this. So it's very useful. And of course, at the, the major aim of all this calculation, it's to calculate the forces loads caused by this slack flow and export them once again to start prof for piping stress analysis. So now I'm select slack flow, oh, sorry, in here to start prof select the name of the file bang file is ready and once again 
I give the floor to, to Alex once again. So Alex can show you how to apply this load to, to this model in StarProf and how to understand will it be harmful for your Python <coughs> system or not. Alex? Okay, thank you. So I will just open this file. And uh, also, let me demonstrate this file. We have several anchors, we have bands, rest and supports, and we have the unbalanced forces from the slug flow. Let me import that forces from the CTPF file. I select, uh, I open the operating mode editor, select the first operational mode, add load forces from the file and select the file uh, from the hydro system software with slug flow loads uh, Starprof import uh, 32 load cases e each one represent the uh, unbalanced forces in all nodes of the piping system at different moments of time so now let's analyze analyze which loads we receive. I just open this band, open its properties, and we see the great forces at the time zero and zero forces at all other time moments. Now I will check another band. Here they see the great forces at the time one and zero values at other time moments. So here we see uh, at time 2, the great forces at time 2, and so on. So let me check the one of the last bands, this one. And here we see the great loads in time 31. So uh, this means that the slug is going here in this direction and pushing all the bands that is on its way. Uh, like this in this direction, then here, and here, and so on. So it is going through our piping and push the bands in different directions. So let's run analysis. And the best way, of course, we can check the stresses uh, in this piping system from all, uh, all that load cases. I will briefly show you. This is the stresses at time 0, time 1, time 3, and so on. And, and also it is uh, more, more interesting to see the deformed shape of this piping system. Let me show you. So this is just uh, the main mode, and this is time 0. Uh, the displacements are very low. Time 1. We have great displacement in this direction caused by the slug flow. This is time 2. It beat this band. Time 3. Here. The force applied here. So now our slug is here. Next time our slug is here. Now it's here. And so on. So for example, I will select the last one, the, the mode 32, it is this band, so if I select this one, we have the great deformations. Let me check the deformation, it is the half of meter, 500 millimeters, so this deformation is very big and uh, our pipe will definitely fall from the supports. So we need uh, to fix it somehow. Uh, the best way to fix it is just add the uh, limit stop, like in our Wetterheimer example. But also you can use the guide supports, anchors, uh, and so on. I will just add the limit stop here. Let me select the limit stop in... Uh, in the axial direction of this pipe, like this. Okay, 
So this is our limit stop and I, I will not uh, put the limit stops for all our model, model to save the time. I'll just put it here and run analysis. And let's check the deformed shape in the time 31. Run analysis. Uh, 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 our analysis is done and you can see that we have no any displacement. It means that we fixed this problem. But uh, the same way yeah. we should fix this problem in all other load cases. Uh, okay. and now let me show you the natural frequencies of this piping system. Uh, I will I will add the dynamic analysis and in project properties I will specify 10 frequencies. I think it's enough. Uh, the friction factor will be zero. So let me run analysis. The natural frequency analysis is done. So our goal is to detune the natural frequencies of our piping system from the frequency of the slug flow. The frequency of our slug flow was about 36, uh, 0 0.37 uh, hertz. So the frequency, the natural, the first natural frequency of uh, our piping system should be greater than this value to avoid any resonance effect between uh, uh, slug flow and our piping system. So analysis is done, almost done, okay, and let's check the frequencies. Here, here are the natural frequency and the first natural frequency in Hertz, it is, as you can see here, 0 0.07 Hertz. But the natural frequency of the slug flow, it, it, it is uh, 0 0.36 Hertz. So it means this, that uh, our piping system will vibrate uh, uh, d during the slug flow. Uh, so we need to increase the natural frequency of our piping system. We need to add more guides, more limit stops and more supports to improve our piping system. And also the last thing I will show you, it is the, it is the dynamic uh, mode shapes. This is the first mode shape. I don't know where is it, so let me check. Here, here it is. This is the first mode shape. This is the second one. We have the vibration of this expansion loop. This is the third mode shape and so on. So uh, it is obvious that we should fix uh, all that piping from moving and increase natural frequencies. So uh, I pass the word to Leonid. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, yes. thank you. Just a moment. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Nick, uh, Serge and Alex. Uh, it was very impressive demonstration. And I just would like to share the screen last time. Uh, okay, uh, to remind you our coordinates and to remind that you can try the, all this yourself because we propose uh, free uh, 30 days past trial license you can just download it uh, activate and try all this yourself thank you so much and this is the end of our session on kaya conference 